you know, as we get going here, I have to we have to get on the record here because this is one of my favorite stories you tell. Uh, and the first time we met, you told me about this story. Um, you had an opportunity. You went to a dance as a young girl. And this, I don't know where this would have been after your work with Mabel. And uh, I think you were in maybe in Chicago. Oh, yes. And you you wound up at a dance with, with a male companion. What? No, he was my date. Your date. He, right. yeah, we had dates he asked me days. to go yeah. with him. <laughs> yeah. Now these, yeah, there you are. So you had a date for this dance. And what, what orchestra was playing the dance? I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> The world famous guys that I don't even remember their name in my head. You know, yes. it isn't there. Yeah. But you would know him. It was Duke Ellington. Duke Ellington. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you knew I would sneak up on you. Oh, you did. So, so Duke Ellington, and in those days, bands actually played dances, and people came out and danced to real music played by... And beautiful music oh. songs, you know. And, and when I sang four songs up there... <laughs> you no. know, yeah. in a way. He says, well, would you like to sing some more? I said, well, I know most of everything you're playing. So you knew his music, which is, <laughs> I mean, I, this is an important turn because uh -huh. I, 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 we'll talk a little more about the classical contemporary thing, and I've kind of got us in there by this, by this example. Mm -hmm. Duke Ellington, to my mind, one of, uh, un, unarguably one of the greatest composers uh, in, in American music history. Mm -hmm. He composed, as we know, in the, this, the Harlem Renaissance, and this was swing jazz. Uh -huh. He uh, virtually invented the, the category. So many other bands that we remember from that era or heard about came later. I mean, Duke Ellington was out there, mm -hmm. but you were at this dance and you're, sing you're with your date, you're dancing, mm -hmm. as I recall the story, and, uh, at some, and you're singing along with the music and your date, I think, as you told it to me once, mm -hmm. uh, went up to Duke Ellington on a break and said, you know, my date is singing all your songs. You gotta, you know, you, <laughs> you know whatever he said, I, we don't, we weren't there to quote it, but Duke Ellington asked you to come. Did he go to the piano and try something with him? We he my date walked <clears throat> me up to the for the you, you know yeah. yeah and the director is still you know not doing much. He walked over you know because this guy was from Chicago yeah. you know and so he, knew so he was pretty <laughs> brave. He knew his way around. Yeah, he, he knew his way well. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, the. Uh, that's how it all came together. Yeah. And uh, we went backstage and ran through some songs that he wanted to hear me sing. So Duke Ellington's playing the piano. Yeah. And, and, and young girl, Jane, probably... <laughs> In probably, my first year at... at right. Uh, right. You're like, yeah, by, by the way, your maiden name was... Uh, at that Hurst. Hurst. Mm -hmm. So you were the young... Jane Hurst at yeah. that point with your date and Duke Ellington's backstage playing the piano and asking you to sing his songs and you're singing and what happened? Well we, then of course when we were doing the, the sections you know which, when the music came in mm -hmm. he'd just go like that you know and I'd go walk, walk up backstage and sing. He'd just cue you for when the vocals yeah. coming? Because I was used to singing on a mic. <laughs> I've been singing on a mic you know for years. Yeah. And yep. So yeah. you had to walk up to the microphone. Of course, in those days, we did had the big probably these big, big fat RCA microphones. Probably <laughs> they're nice, they're really yep. nice. Oh, ones. they were good. Listen, oh, to those the, records. The are, sound was perfect. Oh, oh, oh. So, but so that was that was set with them. With yep. the band. Mm -hmm. But they it got quite an applause anyway. I'll bet. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll bet. Now, of course, the the fun part for me is, is I have spent a lot of time. I I initiated uh, a vocal technique program at Music Tech College here in Minneapolis. It's it's now in St. Paul. It's changed the name when they moved over the river. Uh, it's now McNa McNally Smith College of Music. Oh. But I spent 16 years on that faculty and mm -hmm. uh, and and most of those students uh, wanted to sing more contemporary music. Pop, rock, mm -hmm. country, blues, things like that. Yeah. So, but here I am. I'm a classically trained mm -hmm. singer by training, a classical mm -hmm. So when it got to technique and pedagogy, I got these rock and roll folks, and I realized that, well, what was the main need that we had in that program? And that was to not so much to worry about repertoire, but was to get them to sing properly. 
so they could handle it. Because yeah. rock and roll is demanding. Mm -hmm. uh, the range is difficult, and not, not many people sing it well. Uh, just listen to the radio, most. Yeah. Uh, you know. But anyway, so but what interests me is in how how was. How does that fit with this classical training? You've got Mabel Jacobs uh, on her way to an audition at the Met uh, before she had her breakdown. You have uh, uh, Maddie Ziegler, uh, and you're learning classical, and you're singing, and you're, you're doing opera, and then you wind up, you sing with, some, with Duke Ellington. Now, how, how did that fit? You, the music seemed all of a piece for you. Because I sang everything. Yeah. I mean... Uh, Whenever there was a dance anywhere at the high school, yeah. they'd have my my dear friend John Harlander. I'm going to put him on this tape too. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he was a uh, in the orchestra, mm -hmm. and and every time I was going to sing, he would get up and dance with me. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I have lost track of him, and I'm going to go look for him and. Yeah when we go to California. Well, sure, sure. But, uh, sure. but because we used to get together in, in Colorado, in yeah. California. Yeah. So, anyway, this is going off the track again. But, well, no, that's fine. That's, just, that's your story. But it was, he, he was a musician himself, you yeah. know, and we just loved to do, go to yeah. places. And we went to Europe together after my husband died, a uh, few years after that. And, right. And uh, he was a friend, not a lover. Right. <laughs> so there, we just enjoyed going to all the music that we right. could hear right. in Europe. And as a singer, which is kind of the, the view uh, I, I had when I got into contemporary music mm -hmm. education, is uh, it dawned on me that the, what's different is the repertoire. And as the repertoire changes, of course, any singer, you're going to adjust. So if you're doing, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll do some water. Yeah, uh, do that. While you're doing that, you don't have to adjust on this program. Exactly. <laughs> While you're singing something like, over her shoulder, she digs me, right? You don't sing that the same way you'd sing De Fluttermouse. Uh, right, you don't use the same no. tone or the same it's a But it's the same feeling that you're singing. It's the same singer working. Uh, I kind of know the answer to this, but uh, in the jazz world, uh, people argue about who's the greatest jazz singer, or who's your favorite jazz singer. And there were some classic jazz singers we all kind of came up with because they had long careers. Uh, I'm going to guess cause sort of your favorite. Uh, but uh, who would you say one of your favorite female jazz singers would be? Who do you like? Female jazz singer? Yeah. Pop jazz singer. Contemporary singer as opposed to an opera singer. Uh, I think they're all gone. <laughs> uh, but, well, no, no, no. well, I know. I know they're gone. But who did yeah. you like growing up to listen to? It's not a trick question. I know. I, I know the answer. Ella Fitzgerald. Yeah, because... Oh, Fitzgerald, sure. Oh, Ella. Oh, Ella. Oh, thank you for putting that name in. There you because are. it was my favorite. Well, yeah, she could sing. Yeah. And she could sing anything. Yeah. Didn't matter. And I don't know that she ever recorded very much classical music. I, I'm not sure I'd have to look uh, it up. It but just sounds known. like it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good clear she's about the only mezzo. So many of the jazz singers are altos, they sing so low. Uh, but, oh, yeah. she was wonderful. Yeah. I think Mike's got some of my recordings, so the, yeah. and he's made copies for me. Yeah. And yeah. So that was that, that was that was wonderful for you to say. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Ella, and, and and but again, these there are people who could sing. Now, there's there's a, a, fun issues we'll get to in a bit here with all that. But uh, uh, talk a little bit about. I'm curious about one of the other jobs you had. And you've spoken of a nightclub, which is is now a bit of a tawdry location in downtown Minneapolis. I know. It's day. It I was know. a wonderful, wonderful club. Well, it was not in that building at all. Okay, it was in a different place. It was called Sheik's. Yes, it was. It, but, well, I'll get to that point. Yeah. Um, the Sheik's restaurant was down on 3rd Street okay. when I was singing there. And it was a very classical place and if people from all over the world would be coming to Minneapolis to go to Sheik's restaurant. Wow. And I was meeting so many people that 
they want me to come and visit with them at the table, you know, and it was just one of those very warm and loving places. Yeah. And during the, when they had the blackouts, you know, yeah. and they had this back room that was just beautiful, but had little green lights in the corner, and of course you can't read a menu when it's like that. And so the waiter would come up to me at the, uh, the stand, what do you call it? Bandstand. Bandstand. And would you like to come? You're wearing your white dress tonight. I think I would like to have you hold the menu so you could read it all. Yeah. <laughs> it got to be that kind of a thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I was singing classical music from the dinner time. Okay, so that was classical during dinner. Classical right. during dinner. Right. Then when you had a break and a, between uh, 10 and 10.30... We went into popular music, but it was all waltzy, beautiful songs, you know, that we had in those days. They were just wonderful, and I felt so at home doing all of these things. And I had a tenor, and we do, of course, the <laughs> duets from the old plays and things that are musicals that were out, the old ones. <laughs> I got it bad. Yeah. Leonard Lee is his name. Leonard Lee. Leonard Lee. He was the, at Sheik's, mm -hmm. conducted the Leonard Lee. Well, just a minute now. Just a minute. Now, we're we doing a memory check on that. Where we've got mm -hmm. the computers are working. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, is mine. Google involved, Mike? We don't, it just doesn't matter. Yeah. I wanted to make that, I wanted to make that distinction because I've always, known that uh, in my work as a singer I've done folk music and I've done rock and mm -hmm. blues and jazz and I've done sang classical I've sung classical as a as a, as a soloist and as a in in, in uh, the choir at Westmar of course doing these uh, St. Olaf th these Bach double choir motets uh, and this is like being in the army. You know, they'd line up the tenors, and the, 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 the conductor would go down listening to you. You know, go to here is an F, all right, everybody. La, and he would go down listening to the voice. Okay, you go here, you go here, you go downstairs, and don't ever come back. You go, here, and he'd move us around and line up so the sound was even. It was like being in the army, uh, right? <laughs> well, would would yeah. you know that I sang at St. Olaf? Did you sing there? Yes, I did. <laughs> You say pretty much everywhere, it sounds like. <laughs> Just name it, I was there. Yeah. Detroit, uh, yeah. Yeah. Cincinnati, yeah. you know, Indianapolis. Yeah. Uh, but when I went to... Anyway, I was going to tell you something right now, but I got delayed on that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're good. Yeah. Uh, um, I think I, I, I want to talk... To, I want to ask you about that interface between classical and contemporary music. Uh, so right now I think we're going to take a short break. Mm -hmm. We're going to get a fresh water glass and, yeah. and let uh, 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 and when we come back okay. uh, we're going to go there for a minute. Good, good. Okay. Yep. You betcha. <laughs> <laughs> 